My name is Dr. Patrick McGann, and this is a patient-centered presentation on rotator cuff tears, including diagnosis and treatment. I'm an orthopedic surgeon that specializes in sports medicine, including arthroscopic surgery of the shoulder and knee. I am in a practice in San Francisco, California. In today's presentation, we'll discuss the anatomy of the rotator cuff, causes of rotator cuff tears, treatment options, and then end with the real patient case. The rotator cuff is formed by four muscles. These muscles insert circumferentially around the humeral head, protecting the joint. The supraspinatus tendon runs over the top of the shoulder and is the most commonly injured rotator cuff. The subscapularis muscle is in the anterior aspect of the shoulder and helps to provide anterior stability to the shoulder. The infraspinatus and teres minor muscles run on the posterior aspect of the shoulder and aid in external rotation. The rotator cuff functions in dynamic stabilization of the glenohumeral joint. The muscles compress the humeral head into the glenoid socket. There are typically two causes of rotator cuff pathology, chronic degeneration and acute tears. Rotator cuff tears present with classic symptoms. In a chronic tear, this is typically the gradual onset of pain. In an acute traumatic tear, there is often acute pain following an accident with the inability to raise the arm. Pain is worse with overhead activities and causes shoulder weakness. Classically, rotator cuff tears cause worse pain at night, and night pain is often a patient's primary complaint. On physical exam, there are several physical exam maneuvers that I use to help elucidate a rotator cuff tear. However, MRI imaging is the gold standard for rotator cuff tears. After I evaluate you in the clinic, I will typically send you for an MRI of the shoulder in order to evaluate the type of rotator cuff tear as well as the extent of rotator cuff tear. An x-ray shows the bone but does not demonstrate rotator cuff tears. This is an MRI showing a rotator cuff tear. The arrow shows a white area where the rotator cuff is torn and fails to insert on the humeral head. When a patient is diagnosed with a rotator cuff tear, we typically first engage in non-operative treatment. This includes physical therapy, anti-inflammatories, as well as subacromial injections. However, the decision whether to pursue non-operative or operative care does depend on the tear characteristics as well as patient symptoms. Surgery is indicated for acute, full thickness tears. Surgery is also indicated for chronic tears which have failed non-operative management. Immediate surgery is also indicated for large tears greater than 3 centimeters, as well as those tears associated with significant pain and weakness. In the United States, arthroscopic rotator cuff repair is the standard of care for rotator cuff tears. However, if a tear is irreparable, then reverse total shoulder arthroplasty is also an option. In an arthroscopic rotator cuff repair, torn tendon ends are brought together and secured to the bone with a suture and suture anchors. Although there are many variations in techniques, all techniques aim to restore the anatomic footprint of the rotator cuff. A patient can expect anywhere from two to six small incisions. Following this, the shoulder is immobilized in a sling for six weeks. This slide demonstrates various types of rotator cuff repairs. I prefer an arthroscopic double row rotator cuff repair for restoration of rotator cuff anatomy, strength, and function. With modern arthroscopic techniques, good to excellent results can be achieved in 90% of cases with respect to healing, range of motion, strength, and function. Although rotator cuff repair is a successful surgery, there are potential complications. However, the complication rate is less than 5%. These complications include persistent pain, weakness, stiffness, infection, re-tear, and need for additional surgery. As stated previously, if a rotator cuff tear fails operative treatment, then a reverse arthroplasty is often indicated. The recovery timeline following a rotator cuff repair includes six weeks of immobilization in a sling. During this time, a patient is still in physical therapy and works on passive range of motion. Active assisted range of motion, such as the use of pulleys, begins approximately four to eight weeks postoperatively. At eight to 12 weeks postoperatively, a patient can then actively elevate their shoulder. 
Strengthening starts approximately three months after surgery, and full recovery can take anywhere from six to 12 months. This is a real patient case for my clinical practice. This is a 58-year-old female who felt a pop in her shoulder while reaching overhead at work. She presented with chronic lateral-sided shoulder pain and weakness. Upon physical examination, she had difficulty raising her shoulder and weakness of her rotator cuff. This video demonstrates shoulder arthroscopic surgery. Upon entering the subacromial space, there is significant inflammation and bursitis. This is first removed with a shaver. Following this, the subacromial spur is demonstrated and is removed to prevent impingement. As you can see, the torn rotator cuff is off the bone. This is repaired with a suture anchor that goes into the bone. Coming off the anchor are sutures. These sutures are then brought out of the skin and a passing instrument is used to pass the sutures through the rotator cuff as demonstrated in this video. As you can see, the sutures are passed nicely through the rotator cuff and brought back out the skin. Once the sutures are passed through the rotator cuff, a knot pushing device is used to tie the sutures. Following this, a second anchor is placed laterally to accomplish a double row repair. This double row repair accomplishes great restoration of the rotator cuff footprint for optimal healing and recovery. In summary, rotator cuff tears are due to either an acute traumatic injury or chronic degeneration. For chronic tears, the first line treatment is generally physical therapy. For acute tears, the first line treatment is generally surgery. Surgery is indicated for acute tears, large tears, and chronic tears that are refractory to physical therapy. Recovery begins with six weeks of immobilization in a sling and gentle physical therapy. Following this, there is gradual progression of activity. Full recovery from a rotator cuff tear can take anywhere from 3 to 12 months. In summary, with modern arthroscopic techniques, rotator cuff repair is a safe, effective, and reliable procedure for a patient with a painful rotator cuff tear. Thank you.